Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Zero from TechVanga.info, and today it's time for a replay, and I think you can <laughs> kind of figure out which tank we're reviewing here and taking a look at today. Can you guess it? Well, it is not, no, <laughs> it is the Tiger 1. Yeah, I have not had this tank for a very long time, so do keep that in mind. You know, I'm not a professional in this tank, nor do I claim to be. Okay, let's get it out of the way, disclaimer, you know, <laughs> done. Okay, now, having said that I haven't had this tank for a while, I, on top of that, have to say that I've been enjoying the hell out of having this thing. <laughs> I've been having good game after good game. Um, not saying that every single game I play in this thing is great, I just haven't had much shit games in it. Out of the games I've played, I've maybe had one or two shit games where I got blown up pretty much instantly and that was it. Um, the rest has all been mediocre or better games. So, I really enjoy this thing. It's really a joy to drive for a tier 7. I'm gonna have to say this is one of the best tier 7s I've had. Um, I'm not quite sure if the T29 is better than this one. It's been a while since I've driven that. And last time I drove it was oof, way before a lot of the current day changes, before the accuracy changes. Um, yeah, so... I don't know if that one is any better nowadays than it was before. It was pretty good before, but... Anyways, um, I'm ranting here. The Tiger, what do you need to know about it? Well, let's start off with the upgrade path. We start off with the tank, of course, stock. Um, some of these things will have already carried over from the previous tanks. If we take a look at this one, you'll see that if you've had some of the mediums or some of the other tanks, you already have this gun. But you already get it on the VK3601H, which is the previous tank. And it is this gun, so you have to research it. Now, the thing is, you have to research it. I'm not saying you should use it, because it is a bag of shit. <laughs> uh, th that's all there is to it. The 10.5cm, don't even go there. Really don't. Just don't, okay? Now, for an upgrade path, you need the tracks. Seriously, the, the engine is pretty much the only thing you can mount without the tracks and the radio. You can have these two with the stock tracks, and that's it. Y you can probably mount this first gun. Um, well, I'm not even sure about that, to be honest, but I'm not going to buy to try it out. But yeah, the, don't ever mount this thing, seriously. So what I recommend you do is um, you should have the engine already researched. At least I did. I don't know where I got it from. Okay, you're not going to have the engine researched. <laughs> Um, I think I already had a research, must have been from a long time ago, when the engine was used in something else, because I don't have any of those. Maybe I did research, I don't know. Anyways, um, engine, yeah, it, it's not all that necessary to get in the beginning. If you don't have a research, don't worry about it too much, it's 50 extra, yeah, 50 extra horsepower for the same chance of fire. It's probably going to be a little bit more durable than the first one, but, you know, overall, I wouldn't say waste your first experience on it. Get the tracks first. Uh, that has to be your first thing. Then I would say research this gun if you don't already have it. Uh, excuse me, you already have it if you came here through the uh, VK. If you came through a Tiger P, I don't know if you actually have to research it. Oh, yeah, you do. No, wait. No, you don't. Okay, so if you came from a Tiger P, you might not have it researched. So keep that in mind. And let's go back real quick. Tiger, tiger, tiger. There's tiger. So if you don't have it researched, you have to go through that one. Get the turret as soon as you can, and this gun as soon as you can. And I would almost go as far as to say, free experience these two. Grind out your tracks, maybe. Get these two, at the very least. Or get the tracks, the turret, and the gun. If you have the free experience, I would say save yourself a lot of pain. Because this stock gun, it works, but oh, it's painful. Uh, the reload on the gun, it's it's not great. 15 rate of fire, it's not great. For the amount of damage it does, it's pretty poor. Means your DPM with that gun is pretty shit. And you're going to have to peek out a lot to do the same amount of damage that they can do to you in one shot. So, that gun, in my opinion, is pretty bad. This one... The, terrible, so I free experience it, to be honest, just to get a fun tank, and it's been fun. Well, that's enough ranting about the modules in themselves, so tourist for gun, very simple, this one. 
And look at those stats. Rate of fire of almost 9. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, for a tier 7 heavy, that's not bad at all. But that penetration, 203 is nice. 240 average damage is a good solid number. 0.34 accuracy is good. The accuracy in this gun is good. 2.7 aim time, well, that's the funny thing about this tank. You have tanks that seem to take 6 years to aim, and you seem to have tanks that take no time to aim. This one, even though it's 2.7 second aim time, the bloom on this gun, gun, yes, it shoots gun, <laughs> gun, is I'm guessing is very small, which makes the aim time as soon as you turn your turret around, you're on target, already starts to zoom in. While with other guns like Russians, for instance, that have 2.4, 2.5, 2.3 seconds, is there 2.3? No, I don't think so. 2.7, whatever, the longer ones doesn't matter. They get on target, they take about half a second before they start to zoom in. And that's the difference with this gun. This one starts to zoom in immediately. And you never really have that 2.7 second feeling. Like, I have 2.4 second aim time guns that feel longer in the aim time than this one. It's really weird, but uh, the accuracy or the aim time feels really good on this gun. And you'll see that in my games. Well, game, I'll show you after this. Um... Engine, 700 horsepower, eh, not bad, it's a... how much does this thing weigh? Yeah, let's take a look here real quick. Let's go over the stats. 1500 hit points is actually pretty damn good. We should pull up some other... Um, well, let's compare it to the Tiger P. Keep in mind, this is the stock Tiger P, because I don't own it, so I don't have the turret upgrade. Let's just quickly here grab a couple of heavies um, t wait no there's a t29 it's like wait a minute that's not the t29 again keep in mind this is not the fully upgraded version the tier where are we tier 7 black prince uh, that one we already have we have the french that one and let's just grab a Russian one, tier 7, oh, let's grab the IS. Alright, okay, just a couple for some quick comparison, I'm not going to make this too long, hopefully. Hit points, if you see, all of them are around the 1100, 1200 margin. The Black Prince is 1400, but, oh, that is actually with the upgraded turret, because I own the Black Prince. And the rest of them are all around 1100, as you can see. So even with upgraded turrets, it's about 12, maybe 1300, so... 1500 and Tiger 1 is probably the most healthy tier 7 heavy, if I'm not mistaken, so that's pretty damn good. Now, the speed limit of 40, it's not bad, but most of the time it will not do 40, but it's a... how do I put it? It's not a slow tank, it's sometimes a bit sluggish to get off the, you know, off the starting line, but it will catch up. Um, it's reasonably heavy at about close to 60 tons. Um, the T29 is slightly heavier, the French is a little bit lighter, Black Prince is actually lighter, surprisingly. This feels like a really slow, well, it is a really slow tank, but that's why it feels heavy, but it really isn't all that heavy. Um, the IS is, of course, a pretty light tank, and the Tiger P is about the same weight. Now, the problem, quote-unquote problem, with this tank is the turret traverse. That is one of the biggest downsides to this tank, it's only 18. I was going to say 15, 18. If you take a look at all the other ones, it's one of the worst out there. So you have to keep that in mind. Rate of fire, well, we can't really compare that directly, but because these are all stock guns. Let's compare it to the T29's gun real quick. The 105mm, obviously. Rate of fire of 4. And has less penetration, but slightly more damage. Way less accuracy, though. But better aim time. Aim time. Um, I think the best comparison is probably the French. Since their guns are actually pretty similar. The Deca 90. Uh, Deca 45, obviously. Rate of fire 6.98, 212 pin, 240 damage. So let's get this out of the way. I said get out of the way. Let's go back to garage. And let's get the characteristics of this gun. As you can see, rate of fire is quite considerably better. Um, again, this is not the upgraded turret stats, so this will probably be slightly better around 7. But still, 
almost 9. 212 pen versus 203, 240 damage is the same, 0.36 accuracy versus uh, 34, 2.9 seconds aim time versus 2.7. So, overall I would say this is the better gun still. Rate of fire is way better, pen is slightly less same damage, better accuracy. So, I'm almost going to say that this is actually the best gun of tier 7 for the heavies. Um, the Russian ones of course have more damage, but also less accuracy, less rate of fire, and less penetration. So, overall this is a damn good gun. What else do you have to say about this thing? Well, uh, the radio, the fuck 12, uh, not the fuck, fug, fug. <laughs> 710 meters, that's really good, but in all honesty, who gives a bleep about radios? Yes, I know, I just said an F word and now bleep myself out. I know. <laughs> but, you know, this one, in all honesty, will most of the time already cover you. Because other people have better radios. So, you know, of course you're going to get this one because you got it on, pff, I don't know, pff, one of these tanks. You should have it by now. So, just mount that one and be done with it. There's really not much to say about it. Now, as for the armor, I think we'll jump into... Uh, the, the um, program that you can see armor in that I completely forgot the name of and we'll take a look over there so we'll be right back and here we are in tank inspector let's hope it works now tank inspector does not like to be recorded for some reason it keeps on crashing so let's see if it doesn't crash anyways the target one let's take a look at his armor value the actual lower plate is well, let's take a frontal look this is a dead-on frontal look is pretty much auto ricochet um, depending on what you're shooting with currently it's a 105 so this would be a t29 for instance shooting at the lower plate is a ricochet however this square bit here is pretty much the biggest weak spot sort of i'll get to that in a second which is only about 112 millimeters same goes for this plate also about 100 and here is again a ricochet zone if we get to the turrets you'll see that it's also about 200 and has some ricochet spots and the hatch is pretty small, but only 80 millimeters. So, uh, the, the absolute weak spot is there, but it's the hardest one to hit. Now, overall, this is very flat and not that difficult to hit. However, when you start angling this tank, and you'll see that you'll get to 115, 120. This one is still about 100, but you can angle it quite steeply. And if you look this way, 188. That's weakest. So, you can pretty much angle this tank almost this far and the further down the line they aim the more armor you get so if they hit you in the absolute corner here you only have 115 116 if they hit there it's ricochet there's 113 141 so uh, th about this is the angle that you want to have I'll turn the gun around so you can yep, pretty much see like that is pretty much your best angle um, to get the most amount of armor out of it. Now, still, this is not the best of armor. It's only about 100 millimeters, but that's about the best you can do. It does give you, if they shoot anywhere here, a better chance to bounce. And up here, this was only 112, and now at the weakest, it's 120. So it does give you a little bit of an edge. And this one was only about 100, so you get about 7 millimeters of thickness here, but once you go over here, you get about 30. Take a look from the front again. See? Flat 100. 112, 113. If we angle it, you go up to 107 at its weakest and 100, almost 130 at the end. And this one goes up by almost, yeah, goes up to 150. So the side here is 180. If you uh, angle like this, so angle slightly less, turn the turret around to face again. I do this because then you can figure out how far you have to angle with the turrets. It's easier to see that way. If you angle like this, then your sides are auto ricochet, but this is slightly weaker your front, so it depends on what you're behind. If you're side scraping, then you want to show as little of your tank as possible and show them this. Um, so if you're side scraping, this is when you what you want to aim like. Aim just over your viewport. Yeah, um, just within your track, pretty much within the corner of your tank. So not over your corner, slightly within. And if they're looking at you like this angle, they cannot pen here. This is all auto bounce. Anything here will do no damage. So half your tank, what they're seeing. If you look at the crosshairs here, the top right corner, the whole square there, it's pretty much auto bounce except for your turrets. 
but even the size of your turret auto bounce. So that's how you want to angle this tank. And that's the thing with this tank, you need angling. Like I said, the armor is pretty thin here. Pretty much anybody can pen it, so you're going to get penned a lot. You do have a good HP pool. But with angling, you can effectively, like I said, it depends on what you're doing. If you're facing somebody from the front, um, you probably want to have your frontal armor the strongest. And if you're side scraping, you want this to be auto ricochet. So uh, somewhere between, like if we look from the top, point your gun over like this direction straight towards him. Somewhere between here, and that will give you the best opportunity to bounce. Not saying it's great, but that's the best opportunity to bounce. So yeah, that is the armor of the tire. It's not great, but with some angling, the side can be bounce zone city. And the front can be a little bit better. It's just not great, let's be honest. It, it's flat armor. It's, it's as simple as that, flat and not all that thick. But you can make it slightly thicker and more bouncy. And depending on what you're behind, I mean, it, it, there's not one situation like, this is how you aim your tank and done. No, it depends on the situation. Like, if you can cover your front with, like, a building, you know, you can put it, it so this is auto ricochet, so you only have this. Um, you can angle slightly steeper if you can, so, you know, it depends on what you have for terrain. Um, don't worry about your lower plate too much, because if they're, like, almost below you, it's still 125 millimeters. And this is only 104 then, so your lower plates in this tank is the least of your worries. These and these are much more of a worry for you, so keep that in mind. Your top, <laughs> yeah, don't get hit by artillery. By the way, if you're wondering where I'm looking, over here, oh, over here, it says uh, what it is with its equivalent, which means that whatever you're looking at right now from this angle, so if I change this, you'll see that it's 34, if I look pretty much straight from the top, it's 25. And over here, you can see that the bit that's flashing, that's how much armor it is. And this is spaced armor, which this tank does not have a lot of, but the gun mantle here has a lot of spaced armor, so... Actually, the turret is maybe not the best place to shoot this tank, although it does have some weak spots right around there, although it's still 190, so, you know, it's not weak or anything, but... 100 just on the side there, it has a couple of weak spots, but... Like here, um, there's like a little bit of a weak spot there, if we turn it off real quick. Like right there is technically a weak spot, and right in there is a weak spot, but they're not the easiest to hit. And just to give you a reference, that's how you angle, pretty much the best way to angle. And that's what Tank Inspector is good for, you can actually figure out how to angle your tank. You can look at it and figure out what the best, you know, armor values are going to be. So, I think it's time that I've talked more than enough. Let's get to some gameplay. So, here we are on... What's this map called again? Hi, <laughs> folks. I swear, I play this game. I know it, really. And we are pretty... Well, quote-unquote, low tier in this game. There's a lot of tier 8s. Um, 30, Jack Tiger, RHMs. So, we're pretty... There's only one-third of the team that isn't tier 8, and that's tier 7, and that's me. A couple of tier 6s, excuse me. Screw them. Um, I mean, what? Oh, uh, I'm so sorry for them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh boy. <sighs> this is weird. Anyways, um, so the way I play this tank is if I'm top tier, I'll pretty much play like a heavy bully tanks, um, side scraping if I can, where I can, all the time if I can. And uh, that's what makes this next little bit here all the more frustrating. I'm trying to move up to this corner here, and guess where it is, RHM is going to set up, right on the fracking corner here. So I have no possibility of setting up for a decent shot on this damn corner, and of course things that get spotted and I don't get a shot because he's set up there. Well, I can't really blame him for setting up, but to me it was bloody annoying, it's like, oh, piss off. Why do you have to set up right where I want to sit? And I don't want to cross in this tank because it's not the fastest tank on the planet, so I don't want to cross this opening here. So I'm setting up as best as I can here to angle or pre-angle as best as I can for if anything else comes around the corner, but I kind of would like to support my team here and I can't really do too much with this dude here. So if Ferdy wants to pass, I'll just go back up and let the Ferdy pass because I'm nice like that. And I kind of wanted to see if he got shot in the face. He didn't. So I can move up. <laughs> what? 
don't look at me like that. I know how you're looking at me. Don't even. No. No. <laughs> so anyway, so far, um, what I was saying is normally when I'm top tier, I'm a little bit more aggressive in this tank. When I'm bottom tier like this, I play this tank a hell of a lot more like a medium and I support, I snipe, I do not frontly engage or go after tanks most of the time. T-34 in this corner here. Yeah, yeah, I misjudged my angle there. That was just bad play on my part. So, this minus 6 just shot towards the Archim or the Target 1, I'm not sure. And, oh, oh, is he going to go for the RHM? I can't see it. Oh, they're coming out. Quarter shot into him. And the next one. And here's this, that, that reload. It, it's so nice. I mean, that reload. Whew. Kind of wailing back and forth here to not be an easy shot for the IS-6. As you can see, I'm angling quite steeply here. A little bit too steep. Um, wasn't paying too close attention to it. I was thinking about side scraping around the corner, but at this point I noticed the map and see there's an no, IS-3 there. So I check my flank here and there just to make sure that, you know, they don't have a shot on me. Okay, he's been taken out. Go wide here because I don't want to get spotted by the hill. And there are some nasty TDs up there. So I go wide and I go around and head back to base because we have an IS-3 behind our lines. We have a T-44 in this city part over here to my side. It, it's not good. <laughs> Let's be honest, that's pretty bad. Well, I take a look here if I can spot this IS-3. I'm trying to see if I can spot this... Oh, but I kind of get distracted here. Issue 152, put a shot into him, light him on fire. Ah, and he doesn't die. I do have an... Um... Oh, okay. give me, give me, give me. Ah, shot goes low, dang it. Can finish him off, come on, peek out, peek out. Ah, he goes invisible. Oh no, there he is, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! Mine. Okay, next one. As you can see, I'm firing at 430 meters here, and my aim circle is within the tank. It, it's... Look at... Just pay attention to the aim time. And the accuracy, of course, but... I mean, the aim time on this thing is just good. Um, supposedly it's 2.7 seconds. I don't know where they put it, but... This aim time is just... Yeah. Before I'm pretty much even standing still, it's already zooming in. And there we go, put a shot into him. But, um, yeah, also look at the reload time. Yeah, can't argue with that. 5.75 seconds, and my crew isn't even a full 100%. It's like 98 or something, but this is gonna get slightly better, so. That's with a. Uh, ah! Bounce. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Shot that. Should have gone in. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. Oh, can we finish him off? Come on, come on, come on. Ah, went into his Oh, spaced armor actually. It's an IS-3. A spaced armor on side. Oh, there's the T-44. Turn around, turn around. Put a shot into him. I actually waited a second there because I was figuring out what I was actually seeing. If I was seeing Jack Tar 88 at all. Okay, put another shot into him. This match is getting pretty intense on our side. City has been wiped out in my absence. They all got pretty much annihilated by the TDs that the enemy side has on the hill. They have two SU-152s, they have an ISU-152, and an SU-12244. <sighs> That's all the remaining tanks they have, but bloody hell it's a nasty bunch. So that's not good, and they definitely have enough pen to make my life miserable. Now, this is probably where I make my second mistake of this game. I'll see it in a second. Why? Okay. He got spotted again. I'm pretty sure it wasn't me who spotted him. I'm trying to figure out what my best angle of approach on him is. Yeah. The VK is saying that there were three on the hill and they need to push the tracks. Yeah, they definitely do. Now, I should have waited. That was stupid. And I don't have six cents in this tank, so I don't know when I'm spotted. Now, I have absolutely no idea how I got spotted there. I guess that ISU spotted me and still remained invisible after shooting me, so that to me is a bit weird. I mean, seriously, like a tank like that stays invisible after shooting me? Because the SU-122 had no line on me. He could not have spotted me, so that was pretty bullshit if you ask me, but hey-ho, it's thanks. We carry on. Give me, 
could get a shot in this RG-152. Nope. Now, there's two remaining. There's one of them. Oh, and it's his ass. Yes, please. Ah, sh I should have waited just a split second longer. My aim wasn't fully zoomed in. I mean, I only have like a five second reload time, but pretty much by the time I'm reloaded, it's been zoomed in for half a second at least, so... In time is just nice, and oh crap, he spotted me. He knows that exactly where I'm at. So I try to put one in his track wheel there. I back up behind the corpse, and ah, and that's the turret for you. The turret there was just too slow, and again, the turret on this thing is not fast enough. Now I have 900 hit points. He does about 350 average. I'll take about a shot from you. Well, it's 390 average, excuse me. But you know, let's take a look at the stats. So. Let's take a look at how we did in this game. This was our Mastery Batch Ace Tanker. Yeah! We got Confederates because we shot a lot of people. We spawned both IS-6s even though we never fired at... Oh, well, I did fire at that one. Right. Oh, those were the two crossing, I think. No, it was IS-3. Ah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyways, we got spawning damage on the IS-3, on the IS-6, and on the SU-152. Only 40 there, though. Let's see what we did for criticals. Fuel tank, track, 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 uh, engine, radio, track, and fuel tank. Fuel tank. Man, that's a lot of fuel tanks. And track, and driver. Uh -huh. um, for team score, we did quite a bit more damage than the rest of the people around us. Actually, we did more than anybody in the game. Yeah, that was quite the game there. Um, almost 3400 damage. Take a look here, we fired 21, we hit 21, and we penned 18. Not too shabby. Hit received 3, penetration 3, this tank is not all that bouncy, and some of those were not properly angled against those targets. 1400 potential damage, well that's pretty much what we received as well, so that's not a surprise there. Spotted 2, damage 9, destroyed 3, 700 spotting damage, didn't drive too far. With an event, we made over 100k profit, but 75 of that was uh, a mission, so, you know, don't think that this thing makes this kind of money. And we walked away without any special things with 2600 experience. Not a bad game, so what I think? Well, overall, this is a very decent balanced tank. It is not the fastest out there. Um, let's be honest, the turret traverse is pretty slow with, what was it again? 18. It's pretty damn slow, so you gotta get used to that. If you range to 380, it's not bad, but it's also not the best. You know, it, it's mediocre in a lot of things, but that gun is just heaven. It, there's no other way to put it. The gun is awesome. And I think that about wraps up this tank. The armor is, yeah, it can be bouncy in the right circumstances, side scraping and stuff works quite well on it, but you have to have the right situation. The gun on it is pretty damn good for a tier 7. Love it. <laughs> and this tank and I seem to match quite well, so yeah, there you have it, the Tiger 1. It's just, I don't know, um, a very decent tank, it's the best way to put it, like, it's not a great tank, although it's, you know, I think it's pretty damn great, but it has some flaws, obviously, um, but I think the plus sides of it make up for it quite well. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.